Hello, how are you? Good? Rested? Café was good? Great. Because now we are going to talk about Yara and my experience with performance issues with Yara rules. So I will tell you some tips and tricks how to speed up your rules. Before that, I would like to introduce myself. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm a researcher at the Gen. Before merger with Norton, it was known as Avast. I'm also doing uh, my PhD at the University, uh, no, University of Technology. And during my project, I cooperated with uh, European Space Agency and Czech Police. My research is focused mainly on form models and uh, languages in security. Uh, I'm also focusing on pattern matching, and sometimes I even look into blockchain technology. Uh, I had a uh, talk the, uh, last year on VodConf, but do not worry. You don't have to know much about Yara or this talk at all. I will f like provide you more information than, than enough. My motivation for this talk. Uh, at Gen, I'm working with Marvel analysts. Uh, I'm not Marvel analyst myself, uh, but uh, because I know uh, it is quite hard and challenging to write their rules that are uh, very precise. They detect only the family you want. And on top of that, to deal with like speed issues and stuff like that, it can be really complicated. So I'm helping with uh, these kind of issues. Uh, I'm trying to help analysts to achieve more precise detections, a few false positives, and also fix issues with too many matches or uh, slow down scanning and other stuff like that. I believe there is no need to introduce Yara in this audience, but uh, even that, I would like to go briefly through some basics so we are all in, on the same page. Uh, and also, I will look uh, with you under the hood of Viera. So once I will explain some specific details, how to speed up your Viera rules, you understand uh, why is that the, and the reason behind it. Uh, there is like very, very simple of uh, Viera rule. And you can see there are three parts, meta strings and conditions. Condition is only like mandatory, truly mandatory part of the era rules, and it's basically uh, building expressions, uh, which is evaluated true. Then the sample, which is currently being scanned, is evaluated as matched, or it's false, and then uh, the, the sample is not being matched by the, the rule. Here you can see there are uh, some uh, logical operation like or and stuff like that, and we can also use strings. Uh, which we will define in a minute. And also, you can use some functions from modules, for example, cuckoo modules and stuff like that. Meta information is very, very useful. Uh, besides, like, outer information, you can write here malware family you want to target and uh, versioning, for example, and stuff like that. And the strings, uh, the name is kind of explaining all. Uh, you have strings you want to match in your samples. Uh, you have three time types of string you can use. Uh, the text uh, or plain text strings. Uh, here I am matching hello world. Uh, and uh, you, are, you can also use regular expressions and hexadecimal strings. Here I also use two uh, from many options. You can also use full word means uh, we are searching uh, these strings between non-alphanumerical strings, so some spaces between, between around them. And no case means uh, that matching is done like case uh, insensitive, so we don't care about uh, the lettering. Now, uh, I will not bother you with too much detail about how it actually works, but some key elements are quite crucial to understand why, for example, your errors is generating some warnings and even maybe errors, so they can actually uh, complicate your life. Uh, Yara is firstly searching for strings you defined previously. And to explain how it is done, I choose uh, these regular expressions as an example. Uh, 
the, in the first phase, Yera is looking for every string you define either in one rule, if you are using only like uh, one rule for scanning, or every rule in your rule set. You can scan all, all these rules basically like uh, at once. Uh, and uh, it doesn't look uh, for like the whole string, but firstly, in the first step, it selects so-called atoms, which are substring uh, based on the heuristic from like zero, which is problematic, I will talk about it in a minute, up to four bytes, which should be like the most unique, the most interesting substring of your strings. In this case, in our regex, it will be selected A, B, C, D. And from that, it builds so-called the Ahokorasic algorithm, uh, automaton, sorry. You don't need uh, to know much details about uh, this automaton, just uh, it is very simple find out automaton. It's best, uh, actually prefix three, which is nice because it's uh, saving space. And what's magical about this is that uh, it can search for every matches in one go. So it actually scan your, your uh, file only once and it finds every possible uh, match uh, that could be in that file. I'm like, uh, I would like to for like uh, really, really uh, focus on the idea that there are potential matches. They are not real matches because, as you can see, for example, from this um, image, in, uh, image or sample or something like that, there are two potential matches, but they are not real ones until it's really like confirmed. And this confirmation is done by bytecode uh, engine, which is actually like uh, uh, looking for all information you provided, whole strings, all the options and stuff like that, and said, yes, this is actually match. We found the string in the file or not. This is not match. For example, in, my, uh, in these two, uh, matches, you can see that the second case is ending with symbol F, which is not in the original uh, regular expression, so it's not a real match. Just after that, and this is really important, I will return it, uh, to it later, uh, the condition is evaluated, so uh, Yara will look uh, into the condition and said, okay, uh, the author said that if we found this regex, it's a match, so it will report Yes, this sample is uh, matching, matched by uh, the rule. Uh, these are important steps because uh, in each uh, phase, uh, the errors and warnings can be generated. For example, in the, the first phase here, if your strings are too general or too complex for Yara, and we, I will show that it's, it's quite easy to overwhelm Yara about it. It will select uh, very short atoms, which are not, not uh, very efficient, uh, or it will choose like nothing at all, like zero length atom. And in that case, which is like the worst possible scenario, you are searching uh, every byte of your input samples which is like the most uh, trivial uh, searching algorithm possible, and it will slow down your errors significantly. Also, here comes uh, uh, the warning about uh, the very annoying, this may slow down your scanning or something like that, uh, because there is some heuristic uh, that evaluating the quality of atoms. And when the air is not happy, happy about them, it will generate this warning. I will show you later how to overcome this issue because these limitations, these warnings are limiting you from using your rules, for example, at uh, virus total hunting page and stuff like that. Uh, here, uh, when the matching is being done, you can also get, uh, previously it was error, now it's just a warning, but it's still problematic, uh, that Yara is uh, generating too many matches. Uh, this means that uh, the rule itself uh, is maybe false, so it doesn't detect some false positives, 
but you Abraham, Yara, with too many matches, the limit is currently like one million uh, per, per file or something like that. So it's also uh, quite good idea to think about that if you see such a warning that your URL is too general and you are matching probably more than, than you actually want. And of course, the condition, uh, it's good to think about how to uh, write correct and uh, good conditions, of course, but in many cases, it's like uh, the last break and uh, it will not improve the, the overall rule uh, itself without changing the strings. I could uh, explain you some cases, uh, I will show you and said, hey, this my, my version, the second version is just better, it's faster, and you can trust me because I'm going to be a doctor, right? But uh, it's probably not like enough. So I uh, created a very simple data set. It's publicly available. And all details are, by the way, in the paper, which will be published. But just some, some basic idea about it. Uh, there are some uh, clean uh, and uh, malware samples. Uh, that are publicly available, some text, uh, textbook or something like that. Uh, but mainly I use it as like a big blob of data. Uh, the meaning behind that is not that important. I use uh, version 4.2.3 uh, for these experiments and uh, for like a baseline, for a baseline, I created the simplest rule possible, which is always about it as false. So it doesn't even look into, into the files, so it should be like the fastest uh, rule possible. And uh, on my machine, which was server, uh, Ubuntu server, it ran for around six, uh, 36 seconds. So we are trying to get to this number as close to the possible. Now, first study. Uh, Unreal analysts uh, were trying to match first couple of bytes in the samples. Uh, by the way, uh, these values were obviously changed. They don't refer any specific malware family, uh, but the main idea remains the same, and I will show you the, the speed of them and stuff like that. Uh, on the first look, they all look quite simple, they don't look that bad, but there can be always like uh, improve a little bit. Here, uh, he also uh, limit the size of the files, uh, which were interesting for him. But as I said before, and I will repeat it like multiple times during this talk, the conditions are about it after the fact that strings are matched. So even files that are bigger than here, one a kilobyte, are still being scanned. So you are losing precious time. And on larger data set, like imagine terabytes, petabytes of data, you are losing precious time. And even the second part of the condition that we want to match this, uh, this string uh, at uh, position zero at the beginning of file is unfortunately checked after, after the fact uh, we got all these possible matches. So we are returning actually even the matches from the end of the files and stuff like that. This could be changed in future. Uh, there are lots of discussions with main authors, but for now it is how it is and we have to deal with it. Luckily for us, there is a way how to go around it, because they have uh, very useful functions, int x and uint x, where uh, you can specify in the condition itself that you want to look at specific position in the file and check uh, corresponding number of bytes. Uh, Note that this is in little Indian. There are also versions for big Indian if you are uh, if you prefer it. Uh, and uh, like that, we are removing the string part completely, and uh, we are starting with file size. Here, there is also like a good 
improvement that the DRR has a shortcut evaluation, which means that if the file size is bigger than the condition, the rest of it is just uh, trashed and we don't care about calling this function anymore, which is even better than, than before. The time difference is about 10% faster, which is like, mm, like who cares, right? But uh, in case of larger data sets, it can be very significant. And also, it depends on the contents of the files. Because uh, if you had files that are actually matching a lot of these, these byte sequences, where, for example, the zeros are quite common, right? And you have also uh, the question marks, so you can have whatever you want there. Uh, that s speed up could be even even better. Potential there. This was a really interesting case, and I have to say I feel a little bit like guilty about this solution because I use uh, my knowledge how Yara works and just give give it exactly what what it wants. But it's not like uh, the clean solution. But so in some cases, it's just what you need, what you have to use. Uh, the analyst was trying to find uh, the word PowerShell, but uh, in the samples, there are some special like coding, I would say, where uh, in some cases, a uh, caret symbol was inserted between the letters in a random um, like order and random placement. So he created uh, naturally the rule that is actually trying to match all possible version of it, where you see there are question marks almost everywhere, but how, how can this be uh, like solved better, right? Uh, the problem is that uh, in this case, yeah, is complaining about uh, possible slowing down and it's uh, because when searching for atoms, atoms, uh, it's found only the letter P. Because if uh, other symbols are possibly not there, Yara cannot use it, it for the Ahokorasic algorithm because it would be uh, generating falsely matches and stuff like that. That's the problem because uh, the Heuristics are set up currently uh, that way. It requires at least two symbols to be happy, which is still not ideal. Don't get me wrong. You want to aim for at least uh, three or five symbols for your uh, classic automaton. But in this case, we are currently set this way. So I tried it to use it this knowledge, and I came with idea, okay, let's say we split the definition of this string in two versions. In one, after the letter P, there is caret, and in the second one, there is no caret present. And write it like that. In this little trick, and I'm, I said before, I'm not really happy about it, but it worked. Uh, you have uh, two items actually created, one, is uh, from two bytes, and second one is created by three bytes. And from that, Yara is happy actually about it. And uh, firstly, the annoying warning is gone. No, no more warnings here. And also, uh, it speed up a little bit the process uh, around 15%. So it's not that much faster, but if you need it to use it, uh, for example, in uh, virus total, you can use this trick. Alternations. Uh, another topics I'm not really happy about in Yara. Uh, Yara doesn't understand uh, alternation that much in sense it cannot uh, connect them with rest of the string. This is issue because uh, mainly for strong short strings, uh, you will end up uh, often with warnings about slowing down, scanning, and other other issues. Uh, in this case, there are two versions of uh, hexadecimal strings, and it for us it's natural to write it in short uh, way like this, but for Yara. 
she basically don't understand it and uh, doesn't understand it. And uh, the solution for it is simply rewrite it in a way uh, it actually understands it. So just split it into two, two strings. And in that way, Yara is not using only one byte uh, of uh, or, it, or two atoms or uh, with length of one byte, but actually is using the full potential of these the hexadecimal strings. Uh, you can also see again, uh, sewing down warning is gone now, and uh, the the second uh, rule is about 20% faster. And again. In a large data set uh, on specific samples where these uh, sequences would be more prevalent, this could be even even faster. To general, uh, this this problem is uh, quite often, I would say, because it's natural to provide Yara more context uh, for. Uh, our rules, right? But in some way, we can actually harm the speed of the scanning without actually knowing about it. In this case, uh, analysts were looking for some simple name of file.exe where the name was so random, uh, they just decided to go uh, with dot star, which is matching basically everything, right? Uh, Yara doesn't like it a lot. Uh, you will see in a minute that it actually doesn't uh, generate warning about uh, slowing down the scanning, surprisingly, because uh, the dot exe is actually long enough to create the atom. But for the bytecode engine, this is like the ultimate killer. And we are slowing down the rule very, very much. You will see the numbers. Maybe it will be even surprising for you. The same applies for regular expressions such as dot uh, plus or with uh, dot and range where you don't set up the upper limit. So we are basically saying, okay, match one, two, trillion, million, uh, and uh, uh, basically any other number of characters that are available. This is problematic mainly on the beginning of the files because how the how classic machine works. It is trying to match every possible uh, like uh, version of the string. So if you imagine, for example, name where would be like 12 letters A dot exe, you are returning dot exe and also 12 variants of the name, starting with A dot exe, then A A dot exe and stuff like that. And this can quickly like uh, escalate to one million matches, and now you have problem. And it also time consuming because we are uh, trying to basically match uh, the same symbols multiple times. So even though it's probably like not uh, that intuitive, sometimes less is more actually. And uh, if you ever, if you in the future will write the rules and you have like feeling like, yeah, maybe I should uh, use dot star because there's some random numbers, maybe think about it. Maybe even like try to split the strings uh, like into two if you, you have the random part in the middle because in some cases it would actually be more effective for Yara and you speed up your rules that way. And also, uh, even in practice, uh, these, these uh, random numbers or random sequences are probably not bringing much context if you don't know the specific length. This is like the, the maybe one exception. If you know, for example, that all strings have, I don't know, 42 random letters between, then yes, you can use it, use range, of course. Uh, and uh, think about it also if this couldn't be changed in the future future version of, of malware, but that's possible. But uh, if you don't know the length of, or it's too variable, then think about it twice. 
or maybe even try it. Like uh, I always uh, advise to my uh, to analysts, just just try it. Look, select some random files, and scan it with your rules, and look, search if if uh, you have feelings that it's too long, taking too long, or if it's kind of okay. In some cases, it can be. And of course, uh, again, at Gen, uh, we are scanning quite a large amount of files. So even like 10% uh, different is really, really big difference for us. But for you, uh, if you, for example, need to scan just a few samples uh, and at the same time, it could be okay even with, with the slow version of rules. So I'm not saying that bad in any way. Most of them are quite good. Our analysts are very smart uh, people and I admire them a lot. Uh, but uh, I'm just trying to help them to create the best rules possible. And this is uh, our new, new version. Uh, the another note about that Yara can sense or detect, that's probably a better word, uh, that you are using uh, regular expressions, the notations with slash that are actually like uh, plain text. But why not tell, tell Yara directly by using quotes? It's even real, better uh, for humans, for us, uh, it's readable more. And also in the future, you will not be surprised like why I'm actually using a regular expression when it's just a string. Uh, as I said before, it is interesting that Niera is not complaining about slowing down, even though it took like, almost twice the speed of the fastest rule uh, to scan the files. So they are definitely so, so uh, it was slower than, than usually. But there is a specific warning you may see about the upper, upper limit in the ranges. And it's actually a good idea to look into this because uh, Yara basically is trying to help you in many cases. And these warnings are trying to uh, give you idea what can be done better. And uh, in the second rule, even though we didn't change that much. Uh, the rule is about 40% faster, which is, which is nice. And also, there are no more warnings. In the last study, uh, the analysts were looking for IPv6 addresses. And in these cases, it is really important to, for me at least, to understand what they actually want to achieve in these cases. So there are usually some discussions before we optimize the rule together. So I understand uh, what are the samples, for example, uh, the most common cases and stuff like that. Here uh, we had discussions uh, that uh, his general form of address was too general, basically, and he was matching uh, too many things, there's too many uh, like false positives and stuff like that. Even though he tried to uh, try to limit it with ASCII, so he was matching only the ASCII characters. Uh, but still, and, and was, was, of course, it was also also slow. So we thought about that, and we found out that uh, he needs actually to search only for specific address IPv6 uh, addresses. Uh, more specifically uh, for global unicast addresses, starting with prefix 2001. So we together came uh, with uh, a little bit different notation for it. Uh, and uh, what's also very good, the prefix. If you know the prefix, it's like the win-win situation because uh, you are limiting uh, the option of the matches. And also, Yara is very, very pleased, and uh, she, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a situation for, for both of you. In that case, uh, again, uh, we have a uh, warning about slowing down. Uh, it was caused in the original rule because, again, uh, Yara is supporting regular expressions. That's true, but under the hood, there are some strong limitations. What uh, does it uh, 
can take as atoms and what not. And in this case, uh, basically, it was lost. So that's why there is the, the warning here. Uh, and the second case, as I said before, the prefix was, uh, was uh, the cure for, for this problem. In uh, our data set, uh, we achieve uh, about uh, like 50% faster scanning, which is, which is cool. And also we had uh, zero uh, false positives, which is also like important goal in our mission. Of course, the rule was uh, a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, but uh, for simplification, I narrow it down here and choose the main main focus of uh, our changes. And for conclu conclusions, Yara is great. I really, really love Yara and uh, at Jen, we are using it very passionately. Uh, but uh, there are some limits we need to keep in mind when writing Yara rules. Uh, so we are not creating false positives and we are not uh, slowing down Yara significantly. Uh, the first thing I want you, everyone to remember, the condition part is evaluated after the strings. So think about your strings, please, because they can all, like, completely kill your rules and even your rule sets. So if you have sometimes problem on larger, larger rule set, search for the strings first because they are most like, likely the culprit here. Uh, also, don't use two general patterns. Like, uh, I know it's tempting to create as many strings as possible because you are descript, uh, describing the samples in the best way possible, but sometimes you are hurting Yara because she it just can't take it and uh, sometimes the less is more. And the last, think about how you're writing these strings, because Yara is smart, but not that smart, so sometimes uh, it needs a little help to understand how to work with these strings, and even surprisingly small changes can solve your problems with warnings and stuff like that. And that's everything for me. Thank you for your attention, and I'm ready for your question. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your really interesting presentation. I'm working on Suricata, and we have kind of the same issue with multi-pattern matching. And one solution we have is uh, that we have a fast pattern keyword that we can use to say put this string in the fast pattern in, so we can specify where we want to optimize the multi-pattern matching. Is this something that is available in ERA or, or have been thought? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. But again, there are uh, quite uh, like uh, passionate discussions about these options because even main authors, uh, they know the limits. Uh, but uh, the approach for now, it's uh, uh, they want to keep uh, some basics the same, and we will see in the future if we could, uh, for example, like push them a little bit uh, to implement this. But it's it yes, yeah, Sorikata is great, uh, great uh, project. I like it as well, and this option is definitely useful. So thank you. You're raising your hand over there, or you were stretching? Maybe stretch, yeah. Maybe yeah. Stretch. <laughs> ah, second question. I've got a question on, on the example one, because basically on the study one, what, are, what you are doing is escape the multi-pattern matching. By, so it is going to work if you have one single rule you want to evaluate, but if you want to put it in a bigger rule set, then in this case you will have the cost of a multi-pattern matching algorithm, so you don't really care about doing this trick. Uh, well, the problem is that uh, the Byteco engine is like really slow in this case, and uh, because there is the, the gap, 
it uh, can overlap a lot. So that is so done even on the larger data set. Like we tried and uh, the speed up was there still even on larger data set. But I, I get the idea uh, you have, but uh, there are more aspects uh, to the evaluation. So there are more things to think about and they can uh, actually like, um, the negative effect can multiply inside. Um, I had a question about the data set you are building. I, I, I try to evaluate perf your performance as well, and building that set, I find it was super difficult because your rule performances depends a lot on what kind of file it will run against, like on the content of the file, because you may have one weird pattern that will only trigger like a thousand times in one specific file, but you will not see it until you hit this one specific file. And it was like super hard to evaluate overall performances. This is some issue you faced during yeah, the Yeah, actually, for example, now I remember the one case when my colleague, uh, also not my uh, he was trying to uh, match like JSON format and in the, run it over like data set of JSON files. And he was horrified how slow it was because it was matching basically like everything. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, highly dependent on the on the input files, uh, but uh, uh, you can also like if you choose the random like data set, for example, like selection of clean files, malware, ideally the malware you want to target and stuff like that, then you can have a quite good idea how the rule behaves. But it is true that, uh, for example, even with these rules. Uh, the difference between speed uh, would be even uh, more significant because uh, there will be lots of matches on the data set. So yeah, that's an that's issue, but I would say don't like spend too much time about uh, on this because uh, you have uh, like already very, very challenging job to do. Uh, and rather than that, uh, care about it only when it's really slow and maybe just keep the main concept in the mind and that that's it like uh, you we can't be perfect right we have only 24 hours hopefully everyone so uh, yeah we are trying just do our best thank you I also had a question um, very very good talk and also I could see that you have a uh, strong expert knowledge and maybe more than many people in this room. But then uh, it's your day in, day out job. And have you thought of like, you know, maybe writing a tool or something like that, which, which would analyze the semantics of the rules people send you and then will guide them how to improve? Because you had like basic tips of how to significantly improve your performance of the rule. Would that work or did you consider that? Uh, we are actually working uh, or created uh, some tools before. Uh, for example, uh, my colleague uh, created a very nice debugger for Yara, which is actually open source, like Wing Wing. Uh, and uh, it can help you to understand, for example, how the condition is behaving and uh, how many matches uh, are actually found in the file. So you can actually like uh, then uh, find out, yeah, we have too many matches, we have to do something like that. I also uh, promised for uh, another conference to create uh, some updates about uh, the warnings and uh, uh, additional information that I will uh, send to the official, repo of, uh, official uh, repository of Yara, so it will be there. Uh, but uh, in, so in general, it's a little bit tricky because you need the context. For example, the last case, the IPv6, in some cases it cannot be changed because you will lose some matches you would actually like to have. So uh, maybe in the future, in, like in collective effort, there will be some tools for that. Uh, but for now, uh, the warnings and stuff like that are the best. 
the last thing I would like to say uh, on Twitter, you can search for uh, very nice uh, tutorials and tips, uh, additional tips, how to speed up Yara. So maybe try to search the tag Yara uh, here. And uh, there are lots of more information about uh, how to speed up your rules. Last question. Yeah. No, it, it, it's just a, a simple question. Did you try to optimize your Yara rules with ChatGPT, for example? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't want to upset anyone, but I, I'm, I'm not that big fan of AI. So, no, but um, maybe it would be interesting if someone uh, want to try, please uh, let me know the results, but no, um, I'm not a friend of uh, ChatGPT, I'm sorry. <laughs> Strict rules. Yeah. Ah, maybe the last question there. Okay. So, hello, very nice presentation. Oh. Uh, so, if I get the idea, uh, the main idea is to um, have good atoms uh, for a whole classical. Uh, so, I think for Yara explanation, maybe it would be nice to uh, have a built-in feature in Yara uh, to show what atoms actually come to that Ahu Classic algorithm for such rule. Would it be good approach for explanation, what Yara does, actually? It can be confusing uh, because the heuristics uh, that are actually leading for so to selection are changing uh, quite often. Uh, but yeah, for example, in um, my boss is here, so I'm hopefully not telling something like uh, super secret. But uh, for our analysis, I actually created uh, some extra layer of information. We call it like hints, and I'm actually like yes, saying analyst, hey, in this string, we are selecting only one one symbol, or even like there no symbol possible to create to atoms. So check this out and uh, maybe think about it a little bit. So we are actually providing this information. Uh, these hints are actually uh, not publicly available yet, but maybe also in the future there will be, and they can be helpful, but also you need a little bit of feedback to understand it like what they actually are, because uh, other than in the code, they are not mentioned in the documentation. So for new users, it could be actually quite like overwhelming, like what the warning is saying. I don't understand. Help me, please. <laughs> yeah, so maybe in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I will.